All right, what's up, guys? It's Mitch Orditi, and today we are going to be going over beating Bellion in Chapter 3, so the final boss of Chapter 3. We're going to be clearing that today so I can show you guys some tips, and also, if you're stuck on Mort, I'm going to give you the team for beating that as well. So, <clears throat> by today, you should be having your Wyvern team a little bit better set up, so... Uh, I will go over all my Wyvern units. Each day we progress, our Wyvern team is going to be getting a little bit more consistent. And it will be up to 90% win rate either by today or tomorrow. So your Wyvern win rate will be very high, possibly even higher. If you're using the Furious comp, uh, your win rate will be a little bit higher. But it doesn't matter. You're going to be high win rate no matter what. And your Wyvern team is going to be consistent and solid. And you'll never need to change your Wyvern gear from here. You can later if you want to speed up or make a adjustments to it but at least you have a consistent wyvern team that will always be set that's super important a lot of people at early games will end up building a wyvern team but then they got to move all the gear off to uh clear pve or whatever they need to do but the reason we are doing the guide the way we are is so that you can have your pve team or your story clearing team set up and still have wyvern always there so you always could log in no matter what and at least burn your stamina efficiently so now with this, we are going to have hit Challenger by this day. If you guys are still trying to push the Challenger, here is the team that I used for clearing it. I would just use my Raz, Falconer Clary, Spectre Cerebria, Tyria. You're gonna have to find teams that you could beat. If you see level 70s, you'll probably avoid them. Once you get there, your defense team is going to end up getting attacked a lot and you will lose quite a bit. So once you fall out of Challenger, then you will refresh at the top depending on where you're at and once you refresh it'll give you a list with some easier opponents to get right back into challenger so that is one thing once you're in challenger and wanting to spend your coins you'll see most people are going to be hard to attack so for the next little bit to get the most out of your uh, flags one be doing your npc difficulties in order to unlock hell difficulty and hard difficulty you need to beat this bottom option and once you beat it, it'll unlock the next difficulty. And then once it's back up, you beat it again on hard, it'll unlock hell difficulty. So by unlocking hell difficulty, you are up to the highest thing you can do. Now, if you are sitting on a bunch of flags and you need to burn them, I'm going to teach you something real quick that will help you burn your flags. So this is something that is a last resort if you just don't want to deal with arena for the day or whatever. You will go into a match, you will instantly yield. And then you will lose points. So this will probably take us back down to uh, or, uh, the low. Nope, it didn't. So we're going to do it one more time. Go into the same thing. But this way, you're still burning your flags, getting your uses out of your flags, and you're still getting a at least a little bit of conquest points versus not using your flags at all. So the second time you yield, you will lose points again. After losing two times in a row, then you can go in and just burn your flags from there. So you go in one more time, start it again. And every time after the second one, you will not lose anything for doing it. So by clearing this, going up and yielding, every five times you do this, you still get the bonus. So it's a way to, as you see, I still got the bonus here. That actually worked out perfect. So every five flags, we'll get an extra 10, and you're going to get three, or if you still have the new player logins, you'll be getting six. So this is a way to burn your flags even end to end game when you don't feel like dealing with PvP for the day. The thing is, if you do fall down to the lower rank, you are going to need to refresh this eventually and climb back up. But for I would focus on that on Sundays before reset or Saturday if you want to be safe to climb back up. But this is just an easy way to burn your flags. This way we can go, we can buy the flags and just keep doing this. It'll give us a little bit of conquest points. And that way we're not wasting any of them by just letting them sit. But always do the, so I have nine extra battles I could do. Right now, always do this first. These are really nice. You, you get five for it instead of three for backing out, but you also get some Sky Stones. It's one of the nice ways per month to get a good chunk of Sky Stones. You end up getting a lot over the course of a month by clearing these every time they're up. So in terms of pushing to Champion Arena, it's going to take us a while. We need to build up our roster before we try doing that. But now let's go ahead and get into the boss fight. So we're going to be going to fight Bellion. If you guys are pushing through Chapter 3, this is going to be the Chapter 3 boss. But if you are pushing through Chapter 3, this is going to be your story team. So I'm going to go ahead and show the stats for anyone who is pushing through. If you're following the guide, your characters should look very, very similar. So Raz on one of the free HP sets from one of the three hunt challenges we completed up to this point. You're going to have your Falconer Clary. Uh, I, I bought the free speed set for her. So if you need to switch her in because you need a grass unit, you can do that. Um, to get the full clear rewards, our Spectre Tenebria is going to be on two pieces of the arena gear with four pieces of the free set we got from the hunt challenges again. Next up, Free Spirit Tyria is going to be on the same hunt challenge gear with the Pegasus boots from Chapter 1. If you don't have the Pegasus boots, you can put her on speed set. You have quite a bit of gear that you could be working with to get her built up however you want. 
So this is just how I'm using mine right now. She's on a plus six ring, but we were able to clear all the way to the end. Your Tamarin, again, is going to be on one of those free HP sets that we got from Hunt Challenges. And you see her, she's not fully upgraded, but the more you upgrade these, the better off you're going to be. I do have her six starred. And that is going to be your team for this. Now, if you are to one of the Mort stages and struggling, what you are going to want to do is make your team Adventure Raz, and you're going to want to put whatever your front Wyvern tank is, whether you decided to go with uh, Rose, a healer, if that's what you ended up only having. Um, you will do this. So you make this team right here, and then now you have a ton of survivability, and your goal is just have Spectre Seaver stay alive, and you'll build up souls. Use Arky. So by having Arky, it will give you a chance that when Mort doesn't have his shield up, you can Arky him. But this just allows you the sustainability to get to the end of the fights. And this is also the team we're going to be using to beat Bellion today. So Spectre, Tania, Bear, Crozet, Raz, and Tamarin. So now we are going to go ahead and go into the boss fight. And I may end up skipping uh, to the end depending on if we clear it the first time and if I have any issues. But you can go ahead and take the Mercedes if you want. Or the best thing you can do is if you have a strong friend, you can take your friend's character. So this guy has ML Landy. Why not? We'll take his. Maybe it's geared. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But this will be our team. We'll go ahead and go in. And then from here, it's just about surviving. So um, one good character you can take is SSB. If you know you have a strong friend support, you can just not take your Spectre Tibri and take them instead, your friend support character. But from here, you'll just be going through. Um, clearing the mobs is important because every time you hit her, it boosts everybody and gives skill null. But right away, your t our Tamarin's going to start healing up. But as you see, every time you take a turn, she just gets skill null again. So this is going to be a long fight, but this is a way to cheese the fight. So we're just going to keep letting it auto. We're going to be building souls. And then the soul, as we build souls, we have to time our attacks smartly with that. So using Adventure Raz, you see we got a good chunk of damage there. She already cleansed, though, and we weren't able to do any more damage. But Adventure Raz, every time he gets an S2, you'll be able to get a chunk of damage, which is nice. Your Crozet's going to be taking, or whoever your front tank for Wyvern is, is going to be taking a lot of damage throughout this. But every time your Tenebria goes into idle form, or your Tamarin, sorry, goes into idle form, you're going to be back into uh, being full health. So that is all you have to do. If Crozet falls below 50% HP, like she does right here, he starts getting barrier and shield, which is going to just help with survivability again, which is always nice. So every time one of the mobs attacks, he's going to be getting skill null back up, is what it is, every time they take their turn. So, and then every time you attack her, it boosts the mobs. So going through this, we are starting to get really low on everything. But if you want to manual, and instead of hitting Bellion, a lot of times it is better to hit the mobs instead. So that is one thing. If you want to manual it, it'll make it a little bit faster. Um, if you're autoing it and your gear isn't fully upgraded, you might struggle a little bit. But by attacking the adds, you'll create an opportunity to where you can attack her uh, more consistently. So Crows, as you see, is still staying alive. So as you're getting to these points, even like when you're in the Mort fights, you have the ability to soul burn your Tamarin for heals. So right here, if you are ever struggling, you can go ahead and soul burn, attack into it. You're going to get some damage guaranteed with your uh, whatever damage that you bring, most likely Spectre Tenebria. But then we're also back into Raz, so we know we can get some damage on her again. So bang, good chunk of damage there. We killed two of the mobs at this point. Had you been attacking the mobs from the beginning, um, you would probably be in a much healthier spot and not had to have burned the um, Tenebria S1. But then you just keep taking hits. It's fine. That's just the way the fight goes. You're just going to take a ton of damage. Now we have Tamar or, uh, Tamarins on our turn again. We have the option to either heal or get some more damage on her. It looks like we need to heal here, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and attack this again. So we just keep... We'll start attacking the mobs here so you can see the other other like easier way of finishing it so it's a little bit faster but this fight will take you quite a while to complete so but this is a cheese strat to so just get through it pretty easily it's not really a cheese strat it's just playing smartly so now we have killed all the mobs so we are in a good spot i'm gonna go an s2 here just to fish out some extra damage got the defense break bang so once you get to 30 percent you're gonna be entering the next phase and once you get to this phase i would definitely be manualing um from here I would not be trying to not manual it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> auto it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I would not be trying to auto it from this point. So your Tenebris should be able to break the barrier, no problem. So we are unbuffable and unhealable, meaning that we're not going to get Crozet's benefit here. And if we look at our Tenebris skill turn, 
she is to her S3, but from here you need to decide, is your Kroza going to survive one more hit or not? Uh, I think we're going to be fine here because we're going to put... Well, actually, he doesn't get defense buff because he's unbuffable. But we're going to rip that to get some extra souls. And then she has a poison. She takes some damage. We get hit again. But now we are in a great spot. We're going to go ahead and rip S3 so that we can build souls. S3 gives more souls. Now our Tamarin's back into her turn. Full cleanse. And we're back healing again. So we're slowly, slowly getting through this. One thing you can do is up your skills on different characters. Um, multiple things you can do, but I'm going to continue to save souls from here. I do believe she steals your souls at a certain point, but we'll find out in this fight. I haven't done it in like a month. So you see the poisons are absolutely wrecking her. There is a stage three of this fight that we will be getting to shortly. All right, so we took an extra hit there. We can go ahead and S2 with Raz now. We got the defense break, so we're going to hit very hard again. And we're also still defense broken. This is going to put her into the next phase. So... Once she hits the next phase, you're going to take an attack right here. Take quite a bit of damage. And the bad thing is from here, she has counter buff up. So this is a part where you have to decide, do I want to try to get rid of that counter buff with Tenebri or Tamarin S1? If you do not have that option, this is where having your souls is nice. Because if you would attack, you can use Arky instead as a three soul um, guardian. And if you were to use Arky, you wouldn't get countered. But for this portion right here, since we have Tamarin in the spot, I'm going to go ahead and soul burn it for the heal. We did strip the counter buff, and we landed a poison. So we're in a great spot here. Since she doesn't have counter buff, let's just save her souls. Now she's attack broken. And this spot right here, it might be better to S1 to try to land a poison. Uh, it would do overall more damage instead of using S3. S3 will do more damage initially, but the poison damage on Velian is massive. So we're going to S1. We didn't get the poison. That sucks. But if we would have, she would have taken a ton more damage. Now we can go ahead and heal. This is where she starts placing bombs on your characters. And it could be, it could get a little bit scary from this point. You may end up failing once or twice here and there. As you see, our Raz is on bombs. So the bombs, once our timer is gone, it's going to stun you and you're going to take a ton of damage. So I'm going to go in S3 here. You can also d choose to S1 if you would like. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and S1 here to save Tamarin. Because once she gets to her idle form, we are completely good to go. Right here, Croza attacking. You could land attack down, um, but you don't have to. Uh, using a dog here could be beneficial, but I think what we're going to do is just S1. So we got the attack down, which is nice. So she does way less damage here. Raz can go ahead and S3, and we should be back into our Tamarin full cleanse right here. Now that we're to Tamarin full cleanse, Raz will be good. We don't have to worry about the bombs anymore, and this is going to set us up to completely finish this fight. So as you see, it's pretty easy. Just try to bring a lot of sustain. So two two knights, um, your wyvern front tank, Raz. This is why I tell you to get Tamarin. She is very, very good for this fight. And I'm going to be doing Abyss videos for the next um, couple days. And once I'm doing those Abyss videos. So right here, she has counter buff again. So we don't want to attack with Croza. We're going to get countered. So we go ahead and use an Arky. This is going to do a ton of damage, 28,000. And as you see, we're to a spot where we basically already beat it, but now we can S2. It's going to pull Tenebria. If we land a defense break, she is dead, and she is dead. So that is Chapter 3 boss. So very easy. Just bring one damage dealer, two tanks, and a healer, Soul Weaver. Um, if you're following the guide, you should have the exact team that I have. I showed the gear beforehand. It's very easy to do. My gear is not even upgraded. Most of it's plus 9. The only character with full plus team gear on this team is my damage dealer, Tenebria. So... That is now complete. We are done with Chapter 3. Once you are done with Chapter 3, you now have the ability to get the better Mercedes. So there is a way to upgrade Mercedes. You need to get the currency. I will just go ahead and show it. Uh, this is the tutorial. You can follow the tutorial to do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and skip it to show you faster. I don't want to sit through those menus. So with this, you go in. Uh, it's going to tell you again, but you're going to have this final destination mission. You need to buy this right here. Once you buy this right here, you can, um, well, claim this. We're going to do two ML summons. I think we have two ML summons that we can do, which is exciting. See if we can get an ML5 on this account. But you will need to go into your AP exchange. You'll need to buy this item right here. It costs 200 Once you buy it, you come in here, clear this. You will get the artifact. I believe you get an artifact from this too, which is Magic is for Friends. Once you get that, put Magic is for Friends on your um, Mercedes. And she will be very, very strong. She's going to be one of your core, core characters going forward for PvP. 
She is a very, very good unit, and she is free from this. So now we all have a very good PvP unit. You can put her on your arena defense, your guild, one of your guild war defenses. She will be used in basically everything. So that is the end of Chapter 3. So once you get to this portion, you will have the option to go into Chapter 4. And if we look at our Wyvern team, it's still not the highest success rate, as you see. But we are slowly working on it every day, and it will end up being a 90% success rate. So with this, um, I'm won't really show the characters too too much but you're just going to slowly be rearranging your gear now that you're to a point where you're at the last stage of story you will continue to use the same story clearing team you could use this team right here to clear chapter four it will just take a long time but by using this team you should be able to beat all the bosses with no issues um this gives a ton of sustainability spectre tenebrio but chapter four is very long and annoying so one thing you can also do if you are using this team for chapter four, you can take her off Taga Hells and put her on Daydream Joker because all of the enemies have a ton of HP, meaning you're going to be getting a lot of value out of having Daydream Joker, especially against bosses. So that will be some tips for clearing chapter four. In terms of your Wyvern team, this is going to be, you can see he still needs some upgrades. Our Cigarette is uh, 36 effectiveness. She can be upgraded a little bit. She has too much crit chance. Um, it doesn't matter if you have too much, but if we have the opportunity to lower her to 85 and give her more damage. We're also going to talk about grace of growth within this. So I will go over that in a second, but then we're going to go down our Terran or guard. He is getting better. He has his 80, 80%, 80 but we can still do some upgrades on him to make him a little bit stronger. And then now we have our Mui, which is 57 effectiveness, almost or almost the amount we need, and he overall is good. Terran or guard is the fastest. He should be landing most of your defense breaks. So whenever you're at this spot, though, you have multiple options for your Wyvern team. If you are in a position where you did get the artifact that is called Junkyard Dog, this is really good on Terran or Guard. You can put this on him. It gives you more debuffs to make your runs more consistent. So this is an option you do. There's also a five-star artifact that you could get. I think it's Alabastron. Is it Alabastron? No, I don't think. I think it's Cradle of Life. It's called Cradle of Life. It's Sigret's art newest artifact. So um, if you go to Artifact Journal, you can go to the Warrior Artifacts and see it here. If you get this artifact, it is really good for Terran or Guard. The reason, again, I'm pushing to use Terran or Guard, you don't have to. You can use Furious in that spot, but Furious takes Molagora. So by taking up some of your early game Molagora, you won't have as much for your PvP characters. But if your Wyvern team is more consistent and that is more important to you, then go ahead and use Furious instead. There's a reason I didn't have you six-star your Terran or Guard or Mui if you're following exactly my team because or any of your wyvern characters besides cigarette in your front tank because you have the option now to switch them out but this is the artifact i'm talking about the cradle of life so you can go ahead and put that on as you see it has a 40 percent chance to inflict a random debuff this adds extra debuffs to your terran or guard with this artifact or junkyard dog you should almost never fail it as long as your cigarette has enough damage so now we're going to talk about our grace of growth so yes we did put cigarette on grace of growth but the problem with grace of growth is it only plus 12s your hero so one thing with that is your cigarette is losing out on damage for wyvern so as you're getting to this point you can now take your cigarette out of the grace of growth you can six star her and start putting all the resources into her if you want to if it will make your wyvern teams better because as you see she's only plus 12 meaning she only has two on her skill one her over here, you can see plus five, plus five, and two. So you're missing 25% damage from your S1, as well as an extra 5% chance to land your bleeds. And with your Sigurd, you can try to get as much effectiveness as you can on her. If you're using Furious, you should have plenty of debuffs. If you're using Terran or Guard, having Sigurd with a splash of effectiveness, even if you're not at 65, it'll help your consistency of your runs. But from here, it's um, kind of up to you how you want to or go forward. But this is an option to get your cigarette better for Wyvern. It'll make your runs faster and more consistent by taking her off Grace of Growth. Once you take her off Grace of Growth, there's going to be a three-day wait period before you can put another character on Grace of Growth. But the purpose of Grace of Growth is to be trying out new PvP units. That's why they introduced it to the game. Um, is so that you could put a character on Grace of Growth, put some gear on them, bring them into PvP, Give them a test, see if you like them, and if you do, then you can go ahead and decide to build them. If you don't like them, then you know not to put the resources in. But Grace of Growth, every time you take a character off it, you have to wait three days before you use it again, unless you want to spend a ton of Sky Stones, and I would never spend Sky Stones for Grace of Growth. It is a huge waste. So that is the Grace of Growth from here. You can decide how you want to use it. Um, in terms of what to focus on next, you're going to be clearing Chapter 4. Keep working on your Wyvern team. Uh, just keep optimizing it. As you see, 
Uh, we're we, this is better than our other day. We should be the last video. We're at like 55% win rate. It was just all the pieces were plus nine. They weren't upgraded today. We should be sitting around 70% win rate by the end. And then by tomorrow, once I do a little bit more changes, we should be up to 85 to 90. And then from there, we have a solid Wyvern team. If we fail a run here and there, that's expected. Even my one shot or one shot teams, they fail all the time. So the thing with having a night is whenever you do fail, you feel fast. So it goes to the next hunt or next one. But if you have a soul weaver here, it's still fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to show you guys efficient ways to do things. So um, I still suggest not using a soul weaver as your front tank if you can avoid it, especially not using Montmorency because Montmorency will be good in some other content. And you do not want a wyvern build on Montmorency to use her in the other content that we are going to end up using her in. So if you do have Montmorency built though, nice. It's going to help you because it will give you an extra option later so if you are to a point where you need the chest password the chest password is going to be here so you can copy and paste this is the chest password 0819 global receive you get three leaves and 300k gold next up i'm going to be streaming the uh matches again i streamed the epic 7 world cup yesterday i'm going to be streaming the epic 7 world cup again tonight if you want to come over to twitch uh my twitch is just deity so uh, there will be a link somewhere that you can find in the description or whatever but it's just deity so pretty easy to find but you can get twitch drops there you can get a couple i think it's a couple leaves and a couple charms every single day that you get twitch drops so by just coming over and watching for 15 minutes you can get some rewards and that is going to be starting at um what time does it start i think it starts at 9 p.m my time so 9 p.m central time i believe is a start it might be 10 p.m central time so you might have to do some time conversion there but the last thing for this video well a couple things real quick that you should be doing the, if you want to be touching on whatever side story is available for you at the time of watching this video, you can be doing that. Next up, uh, clearing stage for chapter four, you should be doing all of this and then uh, keep clearing through Nixie's Sanctum or if you're past Nixie's Sanctum, go ahead and start clearing Malika's Consciousness. Um, in terms of lab, just it doesn't matter as long as you're getting entries into it every day. You can maximize that by using the morale calculator that I gave you before. You're going to be having more characters built so you might be able to adjust your teams at this point. And then next up is the Abyss. I'm going to be making second video later today where I'll be showing you how to clear Abyss 80 to 85 or 84. So 80 to 84 today. And then tomorrow I should be trying or should be able to finish a video that is 85 to 89. And then the next day is going to be 90 to 94. And then the next or next day is going to be 95 to 100. So it's going to be four different videos to help you push through this. So the last thing. For this video, I know you guys are probably questioning, what do I do now that I got Selective Summon 2? Selective Summon 2 is big. It has saved it for the end of this video because this is, I want to make sure you guys do all the other stuff first. But Selective Summon 2, you have the option of these characters here. The number one pick is Shu. Shu, if you watch episode of World Cup, she is amazing. She is a character that will win you games you should never win. Um, she's HP scaling damage dealer, very hard to deal with. Shu is the best pick out of all of this. So my order of suggestion for your picks, make sure you get Shu if you already have her. Hey, you got her from a summon already by some chance, then you can get Senya second. Senya is amazing for anti-cleave, great for your arena and guild war defenses. She is a fantastic character to have. She will give you the most value. Third highest pick, I'm going to say it's a combination of Politus, Alencia, and Selene. Whichever character you like out of those three, that is who you would take. But in terms of the four-star hero and four-star artifacts, you don't have to worry about this. If I were to suggest, if you get Shu with a Taga Hells Ancient Book, that would be the number one pick that you can get. Um, if you get a Shu with two Taga Hells, that's amazing. But I personally am not going to sit through this. The second I get a Shu, we're going to go with it. In terms of four-star heroes, you don't have to care about any of these. If you want to pick certain characters, you can. But you're going to get your one five-star hero and two. It's not worth getting any artifacts, by the way. I would not push for anyone to get any artifacts. Make sure you get a character out of this. But four-star heroes don't matter. Four-star artifacts, if you want to try for it, you can. So I'm not going to do that on this video because it's going to take forever. What we are going to do is two Moonlight summons. So see if we can get any Moonlight 5 luck. So a lot of people have summoning rituals. I always go to channel one because that's where the most people are. So I figured the game, if I get ML5, it's going to be most likely to give it to me here because then a bunch of people see it and they're going to also want to go summon. So that is that is my reasoning behind it, but it's not true. It doesn't work like that. But let's go ahead and do our two summons. And it's a three star. Have we got a single four star out of our Moonlight summons yet? Maybe one? Yep. 
So it is Pillis. She is okay. Um, she can be used as a knight option. So she has a specialty chain. She's not as good as Arrowell, but she can be used decently. Now, next up, give me Spirit Isolene. Or don't give me any anything. That's fine, too. If you got an ML5 at this point, congratulations. That's exciting. All right, Talia, don't even know what she does. She's not worth looking into currently, in my opinion. So that is it for this video, though. So hopefully that gives you everything you need. Um, and if you have any other questions, comment them down below. But to, from or at this point, you should just start clearing Chapter 4, focusing on some Abyss. The Abyss guides will be out later. Um, we will have Ancient Inheritance coming, so Ancient Inheritance guides will be up. So there will be other Ancient Inheritance guides, but I know th they're going to teach you how to go through it. But the thing is, you guys on new accounts are going to need to know what kind of nodes to do because you have a limited character pool. So I will be trying to help you all with that and making the best decisions. I will be adding those into my daily guides or some kind of thing, but we will mostly be handling Ancient Inheritance in our Discord server. So that's where most of the info is going to come from. If you're not in a Discord server, you won't get as much info out of it. But if you want to join that, link down below in the description. If you need a guild still, link down below, join, ask for a guild. I'm going to be setting a couple new guild leaders today. So we should be able to pick everybody up that's looking for a guild before Ancient Inheritance starts. But it's been Mitchell Didi, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.